Hey, welcome back to the show. Today we are in Stockholm at the LP Photo Auction um, headquarters with Eric, who has been running the auction since 95, if I'm not yeah, uh, correct, yeah, incorrect. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're going to be talking a little bit about auctions. About uh, These are, of course, camera auctions. This is what we specialize here. And I, we want to see a little bit of what auctions are, what the history of uh, LP is, and where it's going towards. So Eric, thanks for joining us here. Yeah, thank you. Um, Letting me. Let me know uh, how did it start? How did LP uh, photo auction start in '95? Well, we had a shop. I bought the shop uh, at '89, uh, and um, and uh, when uh, it it was it was a auction in Stockholm with Photographica. Uh, but he ended in 93 and then a colleague of mine uh, decided that it should be right for collector's items. So we started the, then in 95 and had it together with the shop. So you had a shop and the auction house at yes. the beginning yes. for a long time. Did, when did the uh, store part drop out of the Two, auction? Uh, well, 2010. Uh, it, the, the business was no more really. I guess the growth of digital, the dip on analog sales, it was harder to maintain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we stopped selling digital as early as 2001, I think. Okay, so you guys were ahead of the curve of what would happen in the digital world as things have been going a little bit uh, down in recent years. As I think uh, phones have been, you know, hitting that entry level market and uh, pro cameras are harder to sell nowadays. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But 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 uh, uh, with pro cameras goes quite well also. Yeah. But uh, but because it's more people buying things to use these days also. So as an auction, most people probably don't understand. I mean, they understand auctions, but they maybe don't understand uh, photo auctions. Of course, uh, I'll mention it now. eBay is probably what everybody thinks of an auction nowadays with, cam well, years ago too, and nowadays too with cameras and buying and selling on a one-to-one, -one, uh, I would say um, customer to customer. But as an auction business, what does it entail? What do you do? Uh, how does it work? We sell in commission. We, we, people came, come to us and, and uh, leave the, the cameras or, and we check them and we check if it works properly and we write a correct description and, and sell on their behalf. And then we, of course, to take a commission for the work. And it works in a way, and I'm going to explain this because I know maybe some people don't understand it, but it works in a way that people, you receive cameras from customers, I'm guessing European and globally nowadays and then you do it on a certain date. It's not an ongoing auction all day. Because no, Because that's no. what most people are familiar nowadays with online sales is an everyday search. So you have a specific date that you set and you prepare a physical auction and then a web auction, if I'm not wrong? Yes, the, the, the web auction was from the beginning for the, for the um, less valuable things. It still is, but, but uh, it doesn't matter as much as it did in the beginning. And the physical auction occurs physically. I mean, we are in 2021 and uh, physical gatherings are not so easy. But let's say we're rewind to 2019 where things were like that. How did it work on a physical level? Yeah, it, it, we were uh, sitting in, in this room to be exact. And, and uh, what's around 50, 60 people who, who bid on it. But most of the things is sold through live and internet bids anyway. See, yeah, because you you first publish uh, each auction. Uh, I don't know how you call them collections or. Uh, well, well, no. It, uh, auction, how do you call it? Uh, auction. Auction. We call each it auction, auction uh, you list online before. Yes. And people can start bidding. Uh, I guess a couple of weeks or months uh, before. A couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah, and people can make their online bids and go there, and you have uh, entry level bid. Um, I think you call, I don't know what you call it. Starting price. Starting price. Yeah. And then people can start bidding and you can see the items have a little bid and you can bid on top of that. And when the actual physical auction starts, I guess you go first through those bids and then you go into the physical people. They're here and online. The, the, the bids before is called absentee bids. Okay. So, so you, and you can bid until the auction starts. And then once it starts, you can't do it. You can't absentee bids, but you can still bid live. So you lo you use the same login, but you log in through none. Then you can live directly bid uh, to console here in the room. So Yeah, so you're basically running a physical bidding, which is the traditional, yeah. I guess, hand raising for different bids. 
and then still have people online bidding for those items that they could have bid before, but also maybe want to continue if they still. Yeah, uh, absolutely. As the them, they will have telephone bids also. So yeah, it's 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 interesting to see uh, how it works all in one physical. I'm day. I must be uh, a lot of pre work to get it ready to have everything go working well because. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but when you're doing live, I, I do live streams on YouTube and stuff like that. And it's always, there's a delay and we're talking about money here. So, you know, people are bidding sometimes a lot of money for items. So I'm guessing there's a slight delay on the online bidding versus the physical bidding or the phone bidding. Do, have you ever encountered issues with the syncing of three mediums? Well, so the, 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 the syncing of the mediums is not that problem really. Uh, um then the bidding system can of course uh, be, be a problem sometimes it, it, sometimes you you it, but that's the same with telephone bids but when yeah. people call from the, the the seller phone in the car and you have screaming they have screaming children in, in the in the back also so so yeah, yeah it's more human factor i think than, than the, the, the technical problems today yeah it must be like a very interesting like a high energy uh, day for the auctioneer Abs absolutely and, yeah. because you're really like yeah. balancing all these things and uh, valuable items and you know people customers which I'm sure are recurring customers many times yeah. you don't want to uh, you know upset with a wrong something you know yeah. okay. I mean and of course mis mistakes are made of course we're human I mean yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. in technology and humans and yeah, yeah. cameras we all know it's so, all yeah. uh, a little bit of mistake sometimes yeah. so uh, the auction started uh, in 95 you closed the store in 2010, if I was not wrong. Oh, well, yeah, me, yeah, because um, it was very, very slow. In, in, in and the, how has the auction been throughout these years? Have you seen any evolution of how it was? Has it moved from collectors to users? Have the collectors changed locations? Because, of course, the world's economics change. Yeah. Um, what have you noticed throughout these years? From the beginning, when we had a shop, it, the shop was for, for the users and, and the auction was for the collectors. When, when the digital world came, it melted together. So, so as we worked mostly with analog equipment, as the, the, the digital things in the beginning was not worth selling secondhand really, mm -hmm. because the technical revolution was so fast. Yeah. So, so it, well, it was not interesting really. Uh, but but it, it melted together. So suddenly it was the same bidders uh, for for users and 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 collectors so and and uh, so or same things all these years i mean what was a collector item like a generic collector item that i can think of nowadays would be leica it's been yeah, uh, that, that, a, those are the a, most sta a, a staple of collectors throughout the years i think we can all agree that's the brand that's held its collector value throughout all these years but what would be a collector item that you would think like that's a collector item in 95, 96, uh, 97, in the 90, at late 90s? Because it, like a yes, obviously, but I feel like this is because I work uh, with Camera Rescue, who's actually behind cameras right now. But um, we see a difference in people would bring collections of uh, Akfa Isolettes and say, hey, this is a collection. And that was a collection in the 95 or in the 90s, but maybe in 2000 something, it's no longer a collection. So that's what I'm trying to find what you've seen is are things not so collectible now that they were back then? And what was a collectible item in those days? Few things that were cheap in the, in the beginning of the nine, in the 90s. They are even cheaper today if you take bellow cameras and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but people still collect them. I, I don't think that the, the, the collectors has, well, they have a lot of, of, of bellow cameras, of course, but, but it's not that collectible in, in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in value anyway. But of course, if you want a nice collection that doesn't cost that much, you can, of, of course, always buy. But it's difficult for us to sell. In the beginning, we sold. Um, Cheaper items, uh, one on one, I think, and and uh, but uh, so so nowadays we have difficulty. We have to sell them together and and uh, with what we call lots. But lots are of course difficult to sell because it it demands the same description uh, as yeah. as one lot. So yeah. or more, you have to describe every item and check every item. Yeah, I, I, but that's what we see a lot is people bring collections of, like you say, Bellows cameras. The yeah early 1900s uh, yeah. cameras that 
unless you really want that, it's hard to sell. So yeah. it's not so easy as a Sumicron black paint, which, you know, everybody knows uh, yeah. the value yeah. and you can find it easily and see a, a find a seller probably and a buyer. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that probably that is something that's been throughout these years. Yeah. Nowadays, how has the market changed in, let's say, the last 10 years, I think? I mean, I remember LP uh, photo probably a decade ago. I started getting more into film photography. I bought my first like uh, camera and I had a friend that always was like, there's this auction that you know that a lot of people know about and it's LP uh, photo and it's like, check out the prices. And I mean, as a user, which is I'm a user, I would look at it and be like, oh, well, an M2 or an M3 are, you know, 800 euros or something like that. And uh, even less, I think. even less probably. And you could buy them. And my friend actually bought two M4 black paints because he put the lowest bid or uh, the starting bid and uh, he won. Um, oh. The hammer went and nobody bought them. Oh. So he got them. And I actually have a Sumicron from here, too, now that I think about it. Oh. But nowadays you see these items and before the bidding starts, like you said, those absentee uh, bids already push the price pretty yeah. high and we, we we have these estimates also not only the starting price and we we try to to adjust the estimates of course so they are it, it's a help for the for the for the for the buyer really nowadays it's the estimate was something else in the beginning because the, there were you started once upon a time but when you now we when you have open bidding and, and starting price we, it's more help for the for the for the buyer to sell this what is what you at least have to expect to give. So like if you see a starting bid and we're in uh, Sweden, so it's uh, um, the Swedish crown, uh, SEC, if I'm not wrong, that's how yeah, you say it. Yeah. Um, so if people see the starting bid, uh, let's say for an M2 at uh, 8,000 SEC, which would be 800 euros. Yeah. And then you have an estimate of uh, 10,000, which would be 1,000 euros, yeah, so 1,200. Nine, nine to 10,000. Yes, yeah, so yeah. something like that. If you already see the bid going at that price, you're like, okay, at least this is selling for what they expected to the minimum be. Yeah. You start a little lower to also get things started, get people, I guess, interested in the yeah. in the auction. How has the interest uh, been uh, as of late? Now, a lot of people have been uh, indoors, uh, I guess, not having so many camera trades and fairs and things like this. Have you noticed the peak in the people getting to the auctions in the latest auction? Yeah, the, the, it has been uh, quite fast, fantastic years when it comes to, to the auctions so economically. Then, then it, of course, has been a hassle to do them because you, you don't dare to be here, here all, all people all the time. So we, we, we have been a little bit late and we have to postpone the auctions from time to time. And, and that, that is, of course, embarrassing. But, but, uh, but this is what, what it looks like at the moment. But, but, but when it comes to the, to, to the, the interest and the price rate uh, race, it was all, already before the, 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 the pandemic. Uh, so... Uh, you talk about the five years. I think uh, that's that, uh, that's a correct estimate. So 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 when when it's, it should be around around five five years. Yeah, I mean we notice yeah. the interest going up every day from social media, yeah. Yeah. online on our on the stores and so on. I yeah. follow a lot of the buys and auctions, and I don't bid most times because I'm not a collector or don't think of it as that. Uh, but is it is growing obviously, yeah. which is a good thing for everybody. It keeps everything afloat. It keeps cameras out of basements, and uh, you know, and they keep it keeps it from from, from yeah yeah keeps it from from the the, the, the garbage disposal also. So, yeah. so so one thing too is, have you noticed a lot more people digging into their houses when they were locked down or at home, working from home? Uh, have you noticed an increase of people being like, oh, ah, now I have the time to put this in a box and send it to, to Eric at LP Photo? I could be. I'm not sure, really. Uh, they, they, we have always got to quite a lot of things, but uh, maybe it was slower, but I don't think it is the last two years. I think it, it, we've got more and more things already three, three, three and a half years ago. But, um, it could be a generation shift also that it's a lot of people who who try to 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 get rid of the old things they don't use yeah. do you have like a set amount per auction so let's say once you hit 500 uh, lots um, you call them lots if I'm not wrong yes, 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 um, yes. do you say okay that's number 65 is going to be 500 or is it more like what comes in before a certain period of time 
it, it's it's a room of, it's it's a, it's a fixed number nowadays and, and that's experience because when we have this physical auction when we're sitting here and we have been doing that even during the pandemic without audience so we are sitting here it takes seven hours yeah so so 100 lots more it's one and a half more and not only we get tired but but the audience really get tired yeah, there's a physical i guess there's a balance of exhaustion between uh, the auctioneer and the people being like, okay, I'm tired. I'm just yeah. not going to look at this anymore. No, no, no. That, that's that, that's the big problem. Is there a premeditated order of items? Yeah, we try. We try to, to we try to 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 have them in the same order in every catalog. Then we have changed the orders uh, from time to time. Do you throw like a little bit of a big fish, and then a little bit of little fish, and then a big fish to keep people interested because it is. We last, uh, I think, the last uh, couple of weeks ago, we saw the like a auction and it was and again 700 i think lots i'm not an expert on this in any means and there was a time that it was like i, I want to take a bathroom break so you would be looking up uh, okay there's going to be a lot of these that i'm not interested so i can go to the do you do like an order so you have people come back like in interest like the m mount bodies and m mount uh, lenses from leica are very uh, interesting even as a viewer not even as a bidder yeah. uh, do you scatter them a little bit do you put them all together we, we put them all together we have we have we, we try to hold the order by by little bit by system and little bit by brand mm -hmm. so 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 uh, funny thing is when we have the last three auctions we haven't had any literature mm -hmm. but because i think literature is one of the things we should have can have a viewing so you can come and look at the books as you may saw it, it's a lot of books next time uh, we had the viewing for this auction we had a, a month ago uh, but but uh, we didn't that was a separate collection so so yeah. it was no books uh, but now we have a lot of books from collected from three or four auctions we haven't had any books so so from but from the beginning we had the books in the end mm -hmm. And, and uh, in those times it was quite slow. So then we moved all the books to the beginning instead. Mm -hmm. So the books are first. Okay. Uh, and, and it was really fun because the customers, oh, it's so nice you have started with the books. And we have been selling books on auction for 10 years, but nobody noticed them because it was in the end. Yeah. So, so that, that it's not the, so much, of course it's a commercial value, but it, it's a way to, to have the, some things, a little bit also that, People are interested in books, maybe and not interested in the rest of the auction. So they can come, be here when we have a physical auction, and and they can go, yeah. and they don't have to sit through two hundred to or two hundred numbers also. So 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 a little bit, but we try to have it. We have old cameras, uh, lenses, uh, film things in the beginning, and then we start starts with with with, with the. Do I remember correctly? We do. We I think we have the. The German brand, no, we have, we have the German brands, then we have the Japanese brands, uh, miniature and Russian cameras, and then we come Leica and Hasselblad and, and different things like projectors. And sometimes we have studio flashes and, and in the end and, and light meters. Yeah. Being uh, in uh, Sweden, which is the house of uh, Hasselblad, do you notice a bigger volume well i guess maybe you would have to have an auction house as us in sweden to notice a difference but do you notice a lot of hasselblad uh maybe users collectors studios was it a more popular brand being that it was here it's a lot more hasselblad in sweden than anywhere else i think mm -hmm. and and uh, we, we talked a little bit earlier about about uh, about um, uh, what you could afford and that, but i think Quite a lot of people with with modest salaries in the in the sixties even bought a Hasselblad also because they always wanted a Hasselblad. Mm -hmm. So 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 it's a lot of Hasselblad in Sweden. But I think the the the, the international interest for Hasselblad has has raised. It has uh, otherwise has been quite a lot of Swedish buyers on on the, on the Hasselblad also. Do you know uh, like do you have like we I mentioned it uh, over but like uh, the people that send things to the auction are they local are they European or just international uh, it, it's mo it's most local uh, and 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 the Scandinavian countries mostly yeah okay. that's an, uh, interesting to know yeah. and uh, the customer base that are the buyers uh, because you have customers that are sellers and customers that are buyers yeah. because each one has a, a fee for for the auction are they stayed in Europe? Are the collections of cameras that you're finding and putting on the auction staying in Europe or are they traveling all around the world? 
they're traveling all around the world. Uh, main most parts is, is Europe and, and, and the, the Asian countries, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, sell a few things to America also, but not that much. I think uh, there has, I think the, the American market is, uh, is as large in its own way, so they are less interested in uh, to buying things from, from Europe and maybe Asia also, I don't know. They also probably have a lot of their own because the yeah. uh, America has, I mean, we notice it nowadays, the amount of interest is almost relies, feeds and relies on their own self. Like they're yeah, like, yeah. like an entity of themselves because yeah. it's such a big country and such a consumer yeah, market. Yeah. Uh, they've been buying and selling and buying. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, how do you see the auction going forward? Uh, the, is there still a lot of interest? Uh, do you still find plenty of things that are coming in? Um, because we are in 2021, a lot of people are um, changing habits from photography to collecting. Uh, like uh, one of the things that's interesting is people no longer collect books that much, even though they do. And I know your wife has uh, antique books. No, no, it's not antique. It's oh. a new, new ones. Oh, okay. oh, it's new. It's Sorry. new. It's new ones. My bad. So, like, I know that a lot of the younger people are not having books anymore that many. And, uh, or music even. So do you find that is translating to the photography part of it? It, it, all, it, it already had, and I think it, we have a return in, in, instead. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a lot of people who, who uh, when, when I started, uh, we started with auctions, well, you can only go back 20 years. I, I, I was the one of the younger, so younger ones. Uh, of course, I was younger also, but, but, uh, but now I am the one of the old timers. And, and, uh, but, the younger generation was not that many. Today, it's a lot of, of, of younger people uh, yeah, interested in resting in the I have my own yeah. small collection of cameras, which I shouldn't have so many because I'm more of a user sometimes. But it's hard, at least in the last decade, where prices were so low. I come from when I shot film when I was in my 18 year old and a teenager, and I knew Hasselblad was the thing you could have. And when Hasselblad went down to those prices that you could buy it easily, let's say, uh, it was too tempting not to pick up. Um, yeah, yeah. So it became a collection. And then when you start realizing you have 10 Hasselblads and you're like, oh, maybe I should start my own auction house, but no, I never did. And I just sold you're them. You're welcome. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not, there's no business I'm interested in. But yes, like that was a thing that happened to me at least. And now is when I try to refine what I have. And I guess people are picking film and photography as a you know, new thing to do which is a little bit outside of that digital world we all live in of, you know, ebooks and electronic music and, and then suddenly cameras are interesting. Yeah, and yeah. of course they're mechanic, you know, mechanical pieces of art. Apart from being pretty, they take pictures. And one funny thing is that you, you always got these questions all, all through these years that, do I dare to buy your camera? It's 30, 40 years old. And no, the camera is 30, 40 years old. It's no problem. You can always repair it. You can't repair a camera which is five or ten years. Mm -hmm. That's hopeless, yeah. because there are any, no end. You need parts. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. We're very aware of that. Uh, in my yeah. job nowadays, it's mostly that is trying to find how to fix the current cameras that are in the market yeah. that are not new anymore, but they can still be used and brought back to life. Yeah. Are you uh, in the auction? Is there? You men mentioned that you do the descriptions and the lots and so on. Is there a part of the auction that does testing or checking, or it's mostly like uh, this is as is? Is there things that you don't accept because maybe they're too broken? Or I do know that back in the day you were repairing. Uh, is that still a thing? Uh, we don't have any repair money. He, he passed away a few years ago, and unfortunately, so so and uh, there aren't that many repair guys in 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 um, in Sweden any longer, unfortunately. Uh, then we didn't repair for for, for in, uh, we, we repair sometimes things for the auction, but it has to do. We you have to to protect the seller also. You can't can't repair a thing to expense. It's, be, it's better to de describe it and and the buyer shall decide it if it's a thing for the shelf or if it's a, something for the use. But sometimes we say this camera is worth repairing. It will be easier to sell. Uh, if it's yeah, I'm, I'm guessing there are certain things that maybe have you know, a value untouched and a higher value repaired and it's worth to add yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's like classical cars, you know, something that you are like this. If you put this little bit of money instead of being this plus this, it's like a lot more because yeah. someone really wants a working condition, uh, you know, piece and piece meaning camera or car. Mm -hmm. So that's that's interesting. Um, do you ever have, um, I guess, 
not on a personal level with customers, but like issues with people that are, have you found customers finding cameras being in not working condition surprised that they're not working if that is the case? Yeah, sure. um, because we notice it on a daily basis that yes, things are getting older, like we said, not a lot of repair. Yeah. Um, do you have those issues? Uh, because you are sending, uh, you say 500 lots, I'm guessing more than 500 you know, boxes around the world. Someone is meant to pick it up and be like, wait, I bought this and it's you know not working as I thought or something like that. Yeah, yeah of course, uh, and, and it, that's a problem. Of course, Some, something most of things is is things that have been in storage or it's, it's an estate or or things like that, uh, and it hasn't been used for twenty years. And we take it up and we test it and it works properly. And three months later, when we have the auction, because it's it takes it, it take time to 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 prepare the catalog and, and everything. It doesn't work any longer. That's why we have a viewing, and 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 even during the pandemic, we had said we had this in in official viewing because we have been here, uh, my colleague and I, and you can call in or send an email, and we can check uh, check things. And sometimes we make mistakes. We 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 miss things, yeah. but we tr we tr we 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 try to be tough and and describe the things very harshly and and when it comes to to do description when it comes to 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 condition of the items the condition letter we put on in things is the outside condition mm -hmm. then we try if we find a fault on the camera we describe it we doesn't say this camera works good it it's it should be working but if it's an electronic one and, and you don't have any yeah, battery that's, that's yeah, like the, a lottery yeah, yeah you don't have a battery you can't charge the battery you can't test it yeah. But but uh, but people are always welcome to to give us a call before, and we prefer that yeah. that than than that people be get disappointed. Uh, but of course, we get reclamations, and, yeah. and, and we try to fix it, uh, mm -hmm. take take the things back, or 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 or, or fix it. Depends on the seller also. Yeah. Uh, so so on the buyer. Sorry, uh, it depends on the buyer. If it's a professional buyer, we are a little bit tougher, aren't we? <laughs> And um, how does it work like this? There, if somebody brings something in to auction and you find it to be at fault, do you usually turn them back? So say, okay, this can't go in the auction. This is not in the state that we usually have as a threshold for items going listing. Uh, you just basically can't accept them. That, that, that's, that's the thing with why we have two, two different auctions very close oh, to each other. Oh. The, the web auction is, from the beginning, it was things in, in, in less good condition. Now it's more uh, things with, with a lower uh, estimate on, it's not rather so, so. But we try to describe the things as carefully, but things below uh, an estimate of uh, a thousand crowns, it's difficult to put too much time in it. Oh, yeah, but but we, we, ch we check, does the shutter sound okay? Absolutely. Uh, if it doesn't sound, we, 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 we use the, the long shutter speed is sticky. It's a word we use very, yeah. very often. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, and, 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 and haze on lenses. And, and, and unfortunately nowadays, fungus. Uh, fungus was quite rare in Sweden, depending, probably the same thing in Finland, I think, mm -hmm. uh, because the, the climate is not that. I, we, I had, when I started the shop, I had, uh, a uh, lot of customers from from Sida, which are the the Swedish uh, development countries uh, for the, for for benefit for developing countries, mm -hmm. and they were in Vietnam and Brazil and everywhere. And when they came with the cameras, oh, you have been in Vietnam, I see. This is fungus in because it was in in humid climate. But mm -hmm. but nowadays we have got more of it. So. Yeah, I guess the age of things and the storage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but they're going slowly into basements or yeah. you know not taken care of of course the sun helps keep them alive and if you use them it, they don't have that problem but if you say that people are finding things from the family inheriting cameras yeah. and bringing them over sometimes they're not in the best conditions and they are very old items sadly yeah. there's been yeah. maybe 20 years of since some of these items have been made or a lot more yeah. so that's it's to be expected i guess yeah. And, and, and sometimes we can be get a little bit surprised. People say that this one doesn't work. Uh, yeah, but it's 80 years old. Uh, you cannot expect that it works properly. It probably worked per perfectly when we tested it, but, but it's a little bit older now. Yeah. <laughs> so so and that's a problem, of course. But, yeah. but, uh, but we try to, 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 
to fix things, but but sometimes we have a responsibility to the seller also. Yeah, of we, course. We, 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 the, 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 as I say often is that when, when it comes to an auction, it's it's three parts. It's the buyer, the seller, and I am in, in the between. I'm, I'm not the most important. It's the seller and the buyer should, should be pleased. Yeah. If I if I get the return of a thing and it's mine, I'm a, I'm a professional seller. It's no problem. I, I, I can't tell. But it's sad when, when you have a seller getting disappointed. I have to wait a half a year more before this thing will be sold. Yeah. How many uh, auctions do you do a year? Two to three. Okay. Normally, so that, that's what uh, the the things and and to keep up a, an interesting auction is. N it's not always the 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 items value as I see it. It should be a nice mix. It should be uh, cheap things which are fun uh, or or interesting, and of course that is very subjective. Uh, once was was a guy here. Uh, leaving a black M2 to me and I said oh very nice and uh, and I took it and wrote it in and, and we talked about it and so on and and he sat still at, at, out in the shop and, and there came in an, another collector and he had a blue plastic camera and I, I don't think that uh, this this uh, uh, Guy with M2 sat there. He, he almost laughed because he he, he saw how enthusiastic I be. This blue plastic camera. I, I thought it was lovely, and I was really enthusiastic over this thing. Where, where I put an estimate on three hundred crowns. Uh, we had it on on the on the cover of the on the catalog also. So blue camera. yes, and <laughs> in the behind you couldn't see it, but it's a blue cover, and if you look, you can see it. It's forms of a, of a, the blue camera, and then then we have a like above it also. But but. Uh, yeah, but it's a little bit of fun, a little bit of nice, a little yeah, bit of collectible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, and, it keeps a balance. But, and, and I'm unfortunately more nerdy on, on, the, on the, the, the blue plastic cameras than I am the yeah. and the Liacas, unfortunately. So. I do, I do uh, the work that we do at Camera Rescue. We do what we call outlets, which is basically the stuff that can't, you know, after we go through and rescue a lot of the cameras, some are not worth the time nowadays. Yeah. And when I'm organizing the outlet, there's always, like you say, that blue camera. You're like, ooh, that's so fun. And like, I, you, you have a Leica next to it, but you're like, oh, Oh, but not in the outlet, but you know, you get the blue cameras yeah. and the paraphernalia. Like I love the you know staplers that are Nikon branded, or oh, you know yeah, things yeah, like these yeah. that are like for a lot of people go unseen and uh, would end up in the trash. But for uh, I guess people that love the medium, yeah. the every little bit, whatever the brand yeah. is fun, especially yeah. when it's rare in uh, you know a joyful way too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, Eric, anything else that you would like to add about the uh, LP photo and towards people that are watching uh, that might be interested in uh, uh, being part of an auction, either as a seller or as a buyer? Um, do they contact uh, the store online? I know you have a physical catalog for those who are interested in going, but of course there's the website where you see all the auction items or lots that are coming in. How would you describe uh, the work through for sellers and buyers? Uh, for the sellers, uh, it's best to con contact us and 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 uh, tell what they have and, and see if we we can help them. And uh, they, of course, they have to decide. Also, it's def difficult to 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 put an estimate on on these technical items in beforehand, really. So we, and we try to to avoid. Um, Handling the things too many times because so we often set the price and 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 and, and clean it and make the condition report at the same time when when we mm -hmm. write the catalog. But we, so the, the answer people get often: uh, uh, Can you sell this? What what is this worth? It's difficult to set the price, uh, but I, this we that this thing we can sell. This this thing we can't sell. Uh, I, I suggest that you you try it yourself or give it to to the Red Cross or something. Uh, it's carry. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a lot of Red Cross. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, lots of things go you you manage to sell, and when it comes to, to the buyers, we, we have the catalog in it, and it's it's quite extensive. And we try to be as careful as possible, even when it comes to to work to if it works properly or not. But the best thing is to to give us a call or or come on that last. We had a viewing in the last auction, and it was very nice to have people here again. Yeah. And 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 hopefully we can can keep up at least have viewing. We, we don't think we will have any any audience on the auction next auction either. But hopefully we'll come back to that also. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Eric, for your time. Um, I, I'm going to throw in some B-roll throughout this interview so people can see 
the kind of items that are here. Yeah. It's a little camera museum in a way. Uh, at the moment, at it's, the not moment. A, it's not a museum, but it, it looks like a museum until I guess the, the next auction comes and then it sweeps away and yeah. the next one comes yeah. in. Yeah. But yeah, uh, thank you very much for your yeah. time. And I uh, suggest people have a look and see what it comes. Yeah. You might be surprised yeah. at a little piece of camera equipment that you might need or want for collectors or users. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.